From fighting Professor Oak to time traveling with Celebi, this is every secret in-game event in Pokemon. Now we all know about the champion battle in Gen 1 against your rival, but what if that wasn't meant to be the final battle? There is actually an entirely complete fight programmed into the Gen 1 games against none other than Professor Oak. This can be accessed by either using the Ditto glitch or by doing some light modification with a Game Shark. Oak's team consists of Tauros, Exeggutor, Arcanine, Gyarados, and the leftover starter you didn't take from your rival. Like yeah, it's that serious to the point where they even programmed that in. And honestly, I think it's surprising that Game Freak didn't reuse the idea of fighting the Professor in future titles more, because it's such a cool idea. Now, moving into Gen 2, there is an event with the GS Ball where you could obtain Celebi. Once you receive the GS Ball, you could take it to Kurt to inspect it, and after waiting a day, he'll tell you about a strange presence in the ball. You could then take the GS Ball to the shrine where Celebi will challenge you to a battle and let you catch it. In the original Game Boy Color versions, you had to beat all 16 gyms and obtain the GS Ball from a real-life event, but in the 3DS Virtual Console version of Crystal, you can get it early from the Goldenrod Pokemon Center after beating the Elite Four. And make sure to keep watching because there's a really cool Gen 4 variant of this event. Now moving on to Generation 3, Emerald saw the Faraway Island new event. To get there, you had to obtain the Old Sea map, which was only attainable during the original event in 2005. Nowadays, your only real option is to use a Game Shark. There's also a Palm Egg Berry glitch you can do to get any item in the game, but pretty much, cheating is your only option. Once you have an Old Sea map, all you have to do is talk to the lady in front of the ship house in Lily Cove City. She'll ask you where you want to go, and now there should be a third option for Faraway Island. And once you get there, you'll have to navigate through a maze before finding a giant patch of grass. Similar to Farfetch'd in the Gen 2 games, Mew hides in the grass and moves at the same time as you move, making it very difficult to encounter. But eventually, you can corner it and you'll enter a battle with Mew and be able to catch it. And it's now in Gen 4 where things get really cool. Gen 4's Heart Gold and Soul Silver had a ton of events typically involving transferring events Pokemon over from Diamond and Pearl. If you send an Arceus over and bring it to the ruins of Alf to activate the Sinjo ruins, you'll meet Cynthia. She'll explain how Arceus can create newborn Pokemon and offer you the ability to get a level 1 version of either Dialga, Palkia, or Girantina. These Pokemon aren't shiny locked either, and you also get a crazy cutscene that references the outside world. Now, we also talked about the spiky eared Pichu event in our Rare Pokemon You'll Never Own video, but in case you missed that, you'll first need to obtain a Pikachu colored Pichu from Diamond and Pearl. You then have to transfer this Pichu over to Heart Gold and Soul Silver and bring it to the shrine at Ilex Forest. This triggers an in-game event where a special spiky-eared Pichu comes and plays with your Pichu before joining your party. And apparently Selby triggers this to actually time travel from the movie into your game. But that's not the only time travel events the Gen 2 remakes brought. If you take a Celebi to the Alex Forest Shrine, you'll be sent back in time to just after the events of Red and Blue. Here you witness a conversation between Giovanni and his son Silver, or your rival, and then Celebi transports you into a cave with Giovanni where you battle him. And this actually brought one of the darkest rumors in all of Pokemon. A loud noise could be heard after Giovanni leaves the cave, which was widely believed to be him jumping off a cliff. And at the time, Giovanni hadn't shown up in Gents 2, 3, or 4, which helped spur these rumors. However, he would later show up in Black and White 2's World Tournaments, debunking that theory. Now lastly from Gen 4 was the Night Sky's Edge Pokewalk course, which was obtained by trading a Jirachi over to Heart Gold and Soul Silver. The Pokewalker courses require you to take steps in real life, and then once you return, it will give you in-game items based on how many steps you took. Stardust, Star Pieces, and Rare Bones were all fairly common on this route, making it an easy way to make quick money. Moving into Generation 5, if you manage to obtain a Caldeo, you could take it along with the Swords of Justice to the Moor of Icarus. A character would appear and tell you about an intense fire where the young Pokemon was separated from its parents. Basically, the Swords of Justice took it in and raised it. As Keldeo grew stronger, it eventually left the forest and hadn't been seen since. But then at that moment, Cobalion, Terrakion, and Virizion appear, and they finally get to have the reunion where Keldeo learns the move Secret Sword. And sticking with black and white, if you bring Celebi to the Lost Boy in Castelia City, the boy will transform into a Zorua and join your party. And similarly, if you bring the Gen 2 legendary dogs to Lost Lorn Forest near the RV, a woman will come out, growl at you, and then attack you. This was actually the first time Zoroark appeared in the game, so its illusion ability actually managed to trick people. Until it transformed during battle, people had no idea what was happening, which was actually pretty funny. Furthermore, you can also bring Genesect to the scientist in the P2 lab, who will tell you that Team Plasma revived it from a fossil and enhanced it with the power of science. He tells you that N believed enhancing Pokemon damages the natural beauty of them, and then cut the funding to this project. But what's so cool 
cool is after beating the scientist in a battle, he'll actually give you drives, which change the typing of Genesis' signature move, Technoblast, when held. Now, the original Black and White had the Liberty Pass event to obtain Victini, but they actually changed it up in Black and White too. If you transfer Victini over and bring it to the basement in Liberty Garden, it will ask to leave its Pokeball. When you accept this, it'll move around, happily looking at its old room, and once it's examined everything, it'll return to its Pokeball. And while this doesn't really serve any practical in-game purpose, these kinds of small side easter eggs are what gave Gen 5 just so much character. You can also take Meloetta to the cafe in Castelia City, where it'll remind a woman of a song her mother sang to her as a child. As she plays the song, Meloetta will pop out of its Pokeball and dance around the room. And even cooler is once the song ends, it will actually learn the move Relic Song. Now for two months after the release of the Gen 3 remakes, you could actually get a shiny Beldum through an event distribution. But having this Beldum in your party actually adds some strange changes in the game. First, taking it to Mr. Stone in Rustboro City causes him to tell you how it's one of a kind and that he wonders if it could stand up to Stephen Stone's Beldum. And the letter from Stephen will also now mention the second special shiny Beldum. There's also another event when speaking to Stephen during the Delta episode in Moss Deep City. This causes him to reference the time he faced Rayquaza with a young man in his black Charizard, which is a reference to the Mega Evolution anime special. And finally, showing this Beldum to the Fossil Maniac on Route 114 causes him to tell you about Steven's journey, traveling as far as Kalos looking for that shiny Beldum. Also in the Gentry remakes, you can move a Diancie over from X and Y. The next time you leave a Pokemon Center, you'll be interrupted by a child, followed by a man in a black belt working for him. They'll then try to convince you to hand over your Diancie to them. Regardless of your answer, the child will say he no longer wants it and then gives you a Diancie site for Mega Evolving your Diancie. And finally, transferring a Hoopa over to the Gen 3 remakes will cause an extra clerk to appear the next time you enter a Pokemart. If you talk to this clerk, he'll tell you a story about a powerful and evil Pokemon confined in a special battle. He'll then give you the Prison Bottle, which lets you change Hoopa into its unbound and awesome form. And that is every secret in-game event in Pokemon.